you go to the doctor and they say, we're going to run some labs. And on that list of labs is a CD and your doctor says, everything looks great. But what just happened? What looks great? Did you miss something? Did you dodge something? Let's break down some of the most common labs your provider is going to run. And we'll start with a CBC or a complete blood count. I often run a CBC among other labs for folks dealing with persistent concussion symptoms or PCS. The reason I do this is it's an excellent screening tool for overall blood cell function and we can use it to determine if any low-hanging fruit has been missed in the metabolic assessment of your PCS thus far. For example, we recently used the CBC as a launch point for solving a young female athlete's headaches after concussion. It's been a while, but we ran a CBC and we saw that she's not anemic, but her cell numbers were kind of low normal and her cell size was low normal. So everything about her red blood cells was moving in this smaller and fewer direction. Based on the CBC, we actually ordered a different test called a ferritin to see what her iron storage looked like, and that was actually incredibly low. That was clinically low. What we found is that by repleting her iron to improve her iron storage levels, it actually cleaned up her CBC and got rid of her headaches and improved her energy. Pretty cool, right? Providers can order a CBC in both urgent and non-urgent conditions, like an annual exam. Uh, it's because this test can cast a wide net for when folks are experiencing very generalized symptoms like fatigue or headache, as I mentioned earlier with that young female athlete. The reasons for fatigue or headache could be anything. So why don't we first ensure the blood cells are doing okay with the CBC? That's kind of why we'll start with that. The CBC looks at your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. Red blood cells, RBCs, are little tiny discs in your blood that carry oxygen to your tissues and pull CO2 away from your tissues. They can do this because we're packed with a protein called hemoglobin. The CBC tells us how many red blood cells there are. It tells us what percentage of your blood do these red blood cells take up. It tells us about how much hemoglobin is present. And it tells us about what size your cells are and the consistency between those sizes. These metrics give us a window into whether or not you are, let's say, anemic from low B vitamins, or whether you're anemic from heavy menstrual cycles, whether your headaches are simply due to a suspected iron deficiency, or if we need to look into other causes for your headache, kind of like that female athlete. Platelets are the cells that circulate around looking to repair or plug up any vascular injuries. So when we see these values are too high, we worry about clotting. When we see these platelet values are too low, we worry about excessive bleeding. Your white blood cells, or your WBCs, get a little bit more complicated because they're our body's immune cells. While a red blood cell is a red blood cell, and a platelet is a platelet, the WBC, the white blood cell, is a label for multiple types of cells. We see that neutrophils are primarily associated with bacterial infections. We see that lymphocytes are primarily associated with viral infections. We see that monocytes can be multiple types of infections because they signal to immune cells and they eat up different debris. We see that eosinophils are associated with parasitic infections and allergies. And we find that basophils are associated with histamine release and allergic responses. It's important to remember that these elevations and depressions will fluctuate with time based on your current immune status. And so what I mean by that, let's take an example. You might be feeling excellent at the time of your blood draw, but you've got a child in daycare and they're constantly bringing home various microbial friends with their coughs and their kisses. Your CBC shows mildly elevated lymphocytes. Big whoop, right? Remember that at the time you feel fine, the rest of your lab in this hypothetical scenario is normal, and there's an explanation found in your home environment. Just because that lab was bolded doesn't mean that it's actually a concern. Commonly, patients will come to me with recent labs that have bolded values and no one talked about them. Is this bad? What does this mean? No one talked to me about this, and so they bring them in and they ask me. And so I want to let you know on the back end, here's what we do when a test is concerning. We repeat the lab. So before digging in further, we want to make sure that that bolded out of range metric is truly abnormal by repeating the lab. In severe or urgent cases when a lab value reflects very significant pathology, the lab itself will actually notify the provider immediately and then in this case, the test again will usually be repeated but alongside further diagnostic workup. For a more detailed and written version of this CBC breakdown, go ahead and check out the blog linked in the description. If you learned something, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about concussion and post-concussion and being healthy on purpose, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you.